I'm Chef Rick Mooney, and I just want to thank you so much and congratulate you on your new purchase of blades by Chef Rick Mooney. And if someone bought these for you, they must really, really care about you. Let me show you a couple of quick tips on how to get the most out of your investment. You know, once you've unpacked all of your blades, you'll notice that it comes with a wooden storage unit. This is blade's best friend for two reasons. Not a, it protects the edge of the, of the blade as well as yourself so you don't cut yourself by accident. The worst thing you could possibly do is store these knives loose in a drawer. No matter what the edge may be, no matter where it comes from, nothing can withstand that kind of abuse. So they must go inside of your wooden storage unit. You'll notice that the back end of it is longer than the front end, so that's gonna, that's gonna house the longer blades. So your longest blade is your slicer. This goes in the very top and back. I put the edge um, uh, away from me or on the left-hand side because I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, flip it around and do it the, the, the opposite way. Always store them the same way. That way, when you're reaching for a blade, you know exactly where that sharp edge is located in the storage unit. Okay, so the large French knife goes in the center. That goes right bullseye center. Offset serrated knife in the front, center uh, right. The smaller French knife in the center left. Utility knife in the bottom left. Herring knife, bottom right. Top right corner goes your, uh, your, your zester grater in the larger hole on the right top. On the left side, goes your diamond steel, it's a sharpening uh, uh, steel. In the front, in this, very, in this front pocket, is your, is, this is where you store your, your shears. And keep in mind, these shears come apart on purpose so that you can sanitize the center when you're cleaning them. Always put everything back in this, in this wooden block dry. Don't put anything wet in there, because depending on your environment, it can create uh, an interior um, atmosphere that's not good for the edges. Then you have your flexible fish spatula. That goes right in the, in the front slot, and there you have it. Not only is this a beautiful display for your countertop, it's also very safe for the edges as well as yourself. Let me give you a couple of tips about how to get the most use out of your knives. First and foremost, you never want to cut on a hard surface such as stainless steel or your countertop or a glass cutting board. Choose a cutting board that's porous and soft that won't mess up your blade, such as wood or the soft plastic. This is what professionals use because they're easier to sanitize. But extremely important is that you anchor down your cutting board. You want a stable surface. You don't want this cutting board sliding all over the place. So you either put a wet towel under it or these um, little rubber mats also help from your, the cutting board chasing around your countertop. You want to have complete control of your knives or your blades at all times. Let's talk for a minute about the importance of the edge of a knife. The sharpness of that knife is extremely important. It's safer. Does it make sense? Yes, it does. A dull blade is going to require you to push harder and struggle with it, increasing your opportunity to actually cut yourself. So you want to keep that edge nice and sharp. If you look at it microscopically, when you get your blades, that edge is nice and straight and sharp. Over normal use, that edge is gonna kinda of get knocked to the left, knocked to the right, microscopically. But how you put it back in line is with your, your diamond sharpening steel. Taking your, your blade in your hand, holding at a slight angle, like a 30 degree angle, you lightly roll down the edge. You hear that sound? You don't have to do it 50 times. Just three or four times brings that edge back into line, putting it right ready for your next for the next task. Over long periods of time, I highly recommend that you get it sharpened and polished by a professional maybe once a year. Store them in your block, and these babies are gonna last you for a long, long, long time. After a hard day's work in the kitchen, your blades are inevitably gonna get a little bit soiled. I plead with you, do not clean the blades in a dishwasher. The jet stream inside knocks the edges around, plus the harsh chemicals will, will pit and ruin any metal that you put inside of a dishwasher. So please hand wash your blades when you're done with them. All you need is some warm soapy water and a nice uh, pad to, uh, to wash them off with. Run down the pad a few times, keeping the edge away from you, running it away. Rinse it carefully, get the edge and the handle. Let it drip dry a little bit on a towel. 
But the most important thing is before you put it away, is to completely dry the knife. Do not put the edge away while it is still wet in a wooden storage unit. Not a good idea for any reason whatsoever. So holding it carefully, put it back in this little housing unit. Soldier, ready for its next mission. Blades, enjoy. All right, I'm gonna give you a little insight on uh, skill development on how to get the most out of your set of blades. So let's start off by how to dice an onion, 101. First of all, it's the anatomy of the onion versus the anatomy of the French knife. Perfectly designed to dice an onion. An onion's a complex vegetable. It's a series of, of layers upon layers upon layers. And what holds all of those layers together? The root, the root end. So when you peel an onion, do not gouge out that root end because that's your anchor. That's the glue that keeps all the segments together. And keeping that in mind, the anatomy of the knife is going to make a lot more sense. If you take your blade and you just put it straight down on a cutting board, you'll notice that the tip of the knife is not in contact with the surface of the knife. And we're going to use that to our advantage when dicing an onion. Holding your blade with your thumb on one side and your knuckle on the other. This keeps a stable um, um, stance with your knife. In other words, you put, your, you put your finger on top to cut with, you don't have control of that blade, that knife. There's no way that these three fingers are gonna hold onto this so tight that you're gonna have a firm hold on it. So put your thumb here and your knuckle there. Extremely important. Stand straight at the cutting board. Make sure your cutting board is anchored down so it's not uh, sliding along the surface of your tabletop. Put the root end of the onion at North Pole. 12 o'clock, take the edge of your knife, holding it properly, slice through the, uh, the root end. So now you have two separate sides of, of an onion, both being held together by the root end. Okay, put one to the side for the moment, keeping in mind that root end, put that root end away from you. All right, again, at North Pole, holding your, your French knife the way I just showed you how, you're gonna go straight down. All right, I'm gonna go sideways so you can get a better view of this straight down, cutting like this. Now, that's the root end, but it's not cutting through the root end because I'm just pushing down with my French knife and I'm not cutting through that so that the root end is still doing its job. It's holding all the, the segments together. So you continue all the way through. If you want to make a dice, then you take that the root end that's away from you. Now, turn it to your left if you're a right-handed cutter. Then, very carefully, sliding the edge towards you, parallel in. So a little bit with a little bit with the heel of the knife and just kind of follow through. So it's here, through. It's not as scary as you think. It does take some practice because you know you're kind of like working in, in, in it's a floating edge. But if you have control of that knife and it's sharp, you can just kind of really carefully with practice pull it towards you. So now root end is here, started here, down, 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 turn to the left or a, a parallel cut to the uh, cutting board. Now it's time to dice the onion. So now everything is held together nice, perfect, yet it's cut. Tip of the knife anchored into the cutting board, holding here. So now you've got complete control of that edge. Down and slide away. Down and slide away. Tip touches first, so I have control and I slide away. Now you'll look, everything is a, is a uniform dice. You continue down, slide away, slide away, and you end up with this piece at the end, or maybe two, because there's your root end. And all this other stuff diced up so perfectly, don't worry about it. Just cut through it. If this is gonna be for a garnish, for, uh, for a, uh, a top of a, of a dish, you might want to pick out all the little pieces, but if something's cooking in, in, in a saute pan or a pot, the little end pieces don't matter. They all have flavor, and they all deserve a place in your dish. So cut through, dice, 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 and there you go. To show you again, a little bit quicker this time, dice down, down, not cutting through, the, the, through there. Parallel, pulling it away from you. With practice, you will be able to dice onions like a professional.
and with your blades, not only are you going to look good, but your food's going to taste good as well. Enjoy.